Hey guys, how's it going? So, got my beer, and I want to share some things with you. Um, firstly, it's it's finally happened. Um, Ryan Gosling has come and shut my channel down. He says that he can't be associated with a man like me who breeds geese and chickens together. Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't believe that's ever going to happen. Nothing bad. Uh, what I really do want to show you uh, is not me drinking, but rather something that I found on eBay that, um, I don't know, I think is kind of cool. Uh, we're about to geek out a little bit here, so uh, bear with me. Uh, we can dive into some things that are a little too much sometimes on this channel. Uh, despite it being about birds. Uh, so, let's get into it. Over the years, I've collected things that... I don't know, my wife says are junk. I don't think they're junk. But there's been one device that... I haven't been able to really... You know, use. Just, just because of what it is. Uh, and that is the... Sane Smart 16 channel relay board. I originally bought this board because I thought to myself, man, that's freaking cool. Look at all those relays. I can control something. Uh, no. I've had it close to 10 years now. <laughs> and uh, it's been through. It's been through a move, two moves. Yeah, because I had it when I lived in Virginia. Uh, so two moves. And. Uh, I haven't used it for anything. Now, Sane Smart, when you look on their website, they say that this board is for Arduinos. And it's true. You can use it for Arduino. Uh, it's got a, I think, 20 pin header. And it has pins 1 through 20, or 16. Yeah, 1 through 16 are pins you set high to switch a relay on. Uh, the other four pins. Yeah, four pins. Two of them are 5 volt, and the other two are ground. Um, and you need to put all of them uh, as their representative voltages. Uh, you actually need to apply power to those pins. Stupid. Uh, or half your half your relays don't work. And I always thought that was kind of kind of freaking stupid. And why should I why should I have to program a, an Arduino? Uh, to control this board, uh, especially because Arduinos don't allow you to have internet connectivity, so you can't really, well, when this board was out, Arduinos didn't, like, they were all locally based, you couldn't do anything remote with them, any of that stuff. I know there's some stuff you can plug in Arduino now that will get it uh, connected to the net, make it a real IoT type of device, but then, you know, Raspberry Pis kind of came along and then everybody was like, yeah, just code in Python or whatever. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't want to write in Python. I have no desire to actually code anything because that's not what I do for a living. And I just don't have the time. And uh, it is what it is. So anyway, got that relay board. And I was looking at it the other day because it's in a box of crap I have sitting over next to my computer. And as I'm looking at it, thinking, why do I still have this thing? And maybe by now we have something that can control it, right? Well, we do. And it's not an Arduino. And it's not a Raspberry Pi. It's one of these. Uh, so this is a ESP32 SOC on this little tiny board here. And yes, it does have Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth inside. Um, on the back here, we have a what it is in Chinese and a URL. About that URL. Don't bother going to it because it doesn't work. Uh, I figured maybe I could get some documentation on this device. No, there's no documentation at all. Uh, you get what you get which is a little box with a, well, 
one of these inside a static bag. Uh, so what do you do with it? I took a, a leap of, eh, it's only 10 bucks, faith, and bought it. Being that it's an ESP32, uh, it doesn't follow, it doesn't, well, follow, it, it doesn't have the same architecture as normal ESP uh, firmwares, uh, namely Tasmoda. So you can flash most things with Tasmatizer, uh, like this board. Uh, this is some sort of crap-ass board that, uh, I don't know, they call it the E-Chen or something like that. Uh, this isn't even an E-Chen, it's a knockoff of them. So it's about the shittiest, crappiest thing you can get on Amazon that's a knockoff of a knockoff, and it shows. <laughs> uh, but you can still control these boards, they just have an MCU, one of these guys up here, these little chips, um, that control the relays. Um, and I think this ESP on here is a 8285, uh, which is, I believe, the MCU version of the ESP. Either way, these are painful. I don't like the MCU stuff. Uh, you have to write special commands for it to get it to work if you use curl or uh, what do they call it, home advisor, that kind of stuff to make those kinds of boards work. It's a pain in the butt. Um, this does not have an MCU. And my leap of faith, my leap of $10 faith, uh, paid off because you can flash the 32-bit version of Tasmoda onto these and control the stupid Sane Smart 16 channel relay board. Um, it's easy. Kind of. Now it is. Well, at least for you, anyway. If you decide to buy one of these and one of the Sane Smart boards, because I figured it out, wrote the code, and put it onto uh, Black Adder's, or got, submitted it to Black Adder's wiki. So you too can do this. Super easy. And I will show you what you need to do it with. So you need to buy one of these. And this is a, it's made by D-Tech, I believe. Yeah. So on the back here, you see Power Ed by DSD Tech. And the model number is there, so you can go look that up. Um, but you need this device, and the reason you need this device, it's a simple one. If you look on the front here, you can see that it has multiple options, right? So you got 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, and 5 volt. Well, you need that 5 volt option, because this device requires 5 volts to flash it. So if you have one of these cables, Right with the uh, with the stupid little pins on the end that say uh, that say things like ground and TXD and RXD. You can't use these cables. Uh, they will work for other things, but not for this ESP32 device because those cables only output three volts, whereas this device will do five. So, real easy to hook up. Um, for the uninitiated first timer who's never done this, it might be a slight challenge. And the only reason it would be a challenge is because if you look on the back of this device here, come on, focus. Let's let's zoom it in and focus. So you can see on the back of this device. You have RX, TX, 5 volt, and ground. Uh, so the 5 volt and ground are pretty easy because on this it says very specifically when I figure out how to get in frame it says VCC, ground, TX, and RXD. So VCC you connect to 5 volts, ground you connect to ground. And those are marked on here very clearly. Let's. Sorry about my mouth. Uh, let's 
grab this here and have a look. So they're marked on this very clearly. Even on the front. So you can see we have ground. We have 5 volts. If we could actually get the focus on this part. Yeah, so we have ground, 5 volts, TX, RX, and then we have this little area over here that has Chinese writing on it. Uh, so when you connect... When you connect this device, the TX and RX need to be connected reverse on this device. So the TX will need to go to the RX, and the RX will need to go to the TX. If you don't connect them that way, neither of these devices will be able to communicate with each other. And you'll have to reverse them. It won't damage them or anything like that, which is fine. But you need to connect them correctly. Now, you noticed I mentioned there's two pins on here. These two pins right here that have Chinese writing. Those two pins, these boards come with this little yellow jumper. And it will be set in the center, for whatever reason, like this, between the two RX and TX pins. I don't know why. I think it's so you can test on the device to see if it's actually communicating, but look, if it's broke, it's going to be broke, and you won't be able to do anything with it. Uh, being able to communicate together on the same device isn't really that important. Uh, but what you need to do with this little fancy jumper here, it's actually a piece of crap because uh, the little piece of metal inside falls out. You need to jump these two last pins on here. And the reason you need to jump them is it puts it in programming mode. Programming mode is important. Without programming mode, you can't flash these. Uh, so you need to put them in programming mode. And you notice on my setup here, I've already got my pin. Uh, my pin's connected and my jumper placed. Uh, it needs to look like this. You need to have it set up like this. So with this configuration, we need to plug it into a USB port. So now, I, other devices I haven't had a problem doing this, uh, but this device in particular needs to be set up like this before you plug this in. Other devices you can kind of you know you set up the uh, this guy first, and then you can plug in the power and the RXTX, and then push the button and all that stuff as you're like you can use them under live power. With this, it needs to be configured first before you plug it in. So, you can go ahead and plug it in. This guy will blink a, bl a whole bunch of red lights. And on here, you'll see a blue light. And my light above me is too bright, really, but you see that blue light there? It appears bright on camera, but it's actually really quite dim. And uh, it tells you when it's dim, that it's in programming mode. If it's real bright and blinding bright, it's in uh, normal boot mode and it's booting whatever firmware it had on it, which, you know, is probably Chinese firmware meant to steal your credit card details somehow through, you know, wireless or something. But, uh, yeah, so you need to have that dim blue light and uh, now we can flash it. Move some crap out of my way here. So let's go ahead and switch that off and open our web browser. So first order of business. Let's show you where to get, uh, firstly, the, the relay board controller, uh, eBay. Can't find it on Amazon. Can't find it anywhere besides eBay. If you search for DC 5 volt 16 channel wireless Wi Fi module IoT ESP32 relay driver remote controller F. You will find tons and tons of these controllers on eBay. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't include a color in there. But uh, yeah, so get your hands on one of these and then you need to buy the relay module. Uh, so the relay board itself, let me move me, 
So the relay board itself you can pick up on Amazon or the Sane Smart store. And uh, I think it's about the same price on both places. You know, whatever. It's, it's going to be around this price. Shop around, do whatever you want, right? Um, but you need one of these. And once you have both of these things, then you need to... We're not there yet. Not there yet, not there yet. So you need to go download ESP Home Flasher. Uh, ESP Home Flasher, you can just go on Google, type in ESP Home Flasher. See that? Go to the first one, Simple GUI Flash Tool. And uh, on the right here, I believe. Yeah, go here. And then you're going to go down here and download it for what uh, whatever version of operating system that you have. So get your hands on that. And then you need to go to the Tasmoda 32-bit website. Uh, and that would be OTA Tasmoda.com Tasmoda 32 release. Uh, the one that you want to download is just normal old generic Tasmoda 32.bin. And uh, you know you got all these other ones here. You can download uh, download those as well, depending on your language that you speak. Uh, but get your hands on Tasmoda 32.bin, and you're pretty much good from the aspect of ready to flash. Uh, so we will check out ESP Flasher, and you can see I've already flashed one in testing. But my device, since I have it plugged in, should be COM6. It's in programming mode, and it should work. Uh, you need to specify your Tasmoda bin. So, like I, I've already downloaded it. And you, if everything works, hit Flash ESP. And it should detect the chip, erase it, give it to that Chinese malware, and flash the thing. And it appears to be flashing. So now is a great time to take a sip of beer. So it only takes a few moments to flash this. Uh, it's not a whole lot of code. It looks like 1.3 mags or so. And uh, now we're done. So you notice at the bottom there it says hard resetting via RTS pin. It doesn't actually reset. So what you need to do is on your device itself, you need to actually pull your ground pin, right? Pull that ground pin off. It goes off. That blue light isn't on anymore. And actually you're, you're actually kind of ready to use it. Uh, so you pull all your pins off. We'll just hook it up to the Sane Smart relay board, and you need to pull off your jumper pin. And if you look real close, you can see that it still has the stinking little piece of metal on it. So you need to pay attention to that. You can't leave that piece of metal on there. You need to take that off. Yes. It just entered low earth orbit. I have no idea where it went. So you need to get that off there or it will perpetually be in programming mode, which won't help you. Uh, so now we have a flashed board. We have our Sane Smart board here and I've got a 12 volt power supply and it's on and the Sane Smart device is on. So it's probably a wise idea To unplug this first, and you want your you want to take your board, and on the Sane Smart relay board, you want to line up your pins and not bend any of them, and push it on to the header, and you can see how it's sitting there. That's exactly what we want. And then you need to plug your power back in. And I know for my overseas guys, uh, this is kind of weird, right? Like uh, this, this might make you uncomfortable or something. Like I can, you know, probably stick my fingers in here and get electrocuted. 
minutes, whatever. Uh, so this device should be on now. So what we're going to do is log into I'm going to log into my router real quick. Give me one second. Listen to that glorious music. It's so chill. Alright, so I got my cell phone here. And what we need to do is we need to go to wireless. So you'll see here that clean my phone off. So you'll see here we have Tasmoda. Maybe. Yeah. So Tasmoda. We want to click on that and it will connect and it'll bring you to the user interface of this guy so it's going to ask you for a uh, password come on focus yeah so it's going to connect to your wireless and ask you for that Wi-Fi password so I'm going to enter that real quick now these these do support um, What am I trying to say? They support wireless G. Some of the devices don't support G. They support uh, only B. So you would need to create it. If you saw there, I had two networks. And that's because one of the networks is uh, wireless B. And uh, some of them only support wireless B. Because, you know, they use like 10 years ago technology. Um, so as you can see there... It said wire. It said successfully connected before it went away, and I no longer have it in my list of wireless access points. So we're done on the cell phone, and it gave me an IP address as well. So I'm going to go to that IP address if I can type it. do not need ESP flasher up. So this is the IP address of the relay board or the relay board controller. Um, you notice that it has like nothing, nothing in here, nothing, no configuration yet, nothing uh, useful. Uh, despite it being a 16 channel relay board, I can't actually control anything. So back over here in our templates section of Black Adder, you hit copy on this line here, and you go back into your configuration for your new relay board. So configuration, configure template, which is not the place we want to be. Configure other is where we want to be. So you notice here it says name ESP32 dev kit, which matches up here. If you erase all of that out of there and paste in what you copied off the mtools website and then hit activate and save the ESP controller will reboot uh, with the new template applied to it real simple and you notice we have a lot more options here now and when you click these buttons kind of you might actually be able to hear it clicking in the background yeah so when we click these buttons it changes from zero to one uh, so let's go back to tag on ESP flasher close that and we'll zoom in on this a bit I will bring this back up and we'll 
make it a little bit smaller so we can actually see here that it's actually working. So when I click one, you see my little red light lit up here. And uh, you know, if I proceed to go crazy and click all of them, they all light up. So now, I think for what? Let's assume the Sane Smart thing was 15 bucks and the controller was 10. So, you know, $25, we have a 16 channel relay uh, board that you can control over wireless. And uh, you notice the, the vertical type layout of this here. Uh, yeah, it works on a cell phone. Uh, it's actually how I control my deer feeder outside when people come over and I want to feed the birds and I want to show them the birds and get all the birds to come running and flocking up to the fence line. Uh, I'll bring up I'll bring up my controller and uh, run the deer feeder. So you can you can simply click click on these little buttons here and you know do things whatever action it is that you would like. Um, these relays uh, on the relay itself it says it supports uh, let's let's zoom in so on the relay it says it supports uh, 10 amps this is funny my uh, it looks like my um, video source is backwards Change the wrong one, or didn't I? Yeah, I'm good. All right, so you notice it says it supports uh, 10 amps at 250 volts AC and 10 amps at what is that 30 volts DC, and then it also supports 10 amps at 125 volts AC. So you can run all your normal stuff that you will want on here up to 10 amps. Now these are. Uh, these relays are from Yulong Ding Dong, um, Songle, right? But I haven't really had a Songle relay fail catastrophically, like try to burn my house down catastrophically. It just usually kind of uh, kind of peters out and doesn't work anymore. Um, but you know, as long as you're not running like high induction loads, like a a toaster and a coffee maker on the same outlet. Uh, these relays will be fine. Now, uh, I don't know if you know how a relay works, but you, on a relay, you have a normally open and a normally closed, and there's only three pins that you need to care about. Uh, the center being your common, which would be your ground or your neutral, and normally open or normally closed. So normally closed means that when the relay is not energized, the device that you have connected to it, it will be. Uh, it means that the the connection itself is closed. Uh, normally open means that you must energize the relay to get it to create a connection on whatever device it is that you have connected to this. And it's as simple as, okay, well, you, you know, you undo these, these little screws here with your fancy little screwdriver or whatever, right? You connect your neutral to the center you connect your uh, load to either the open side or the closed side. And uh, then you go into Tasmoda here and uh, click your button. If when you plug it in to the actual power outlet, if it turns on without you doing anything in Tasmoda over here, uh, you have it connected to the normally closed. Uh, or you've been messing around in Tasmoda and your relay is already set on. So connect it to the other one, whatever position you want it to be in. Uh, once you do that, rock on, go crazy. The world's your oyster, right? Like connect, connect your freaking toilet to it. Uh, if you can automate your toilet, uh, connect your, your bidet, connect your sink, whatever. Uh, just go get yourself a, uh, one of these, right? So this is a, 
solenoid meant for controlling water. It's actually a WAG solenoid, uh, water, air, gas, um, or WAG, water, oil, gas. Sorry. Um, so you can you can do water, oil, gas through this thing. Uh, this in particular only does. Uh, it's real low flow. It has real small orifices in the bottom there. Um, so this is really only good for, you know, small stuff. Uh, but you can buy much bigger electronically actuated solenoids like this and flush your toilet with them. So, right. Now this, this guy here isn't what I'm going to actually be using uh, in, my, in my hen house. And if we scoot away across the room... And I grab one of these guys. So this is a uh, Sonoff Four Channel Pro, and same thing, right? So we have four relays in here. The reason I want this one is because of this super sexy box on it. Um, you notice that this guy's a little dusty. Well, chicken poop tends to be a little moist, and the dust that collects on something like this in an open environment can get moist too and it can kill this so uh, I need to be able to seal these off and I don't feel like building a box to cover them and besides that these mount on these real slick things called DIN rails which is also what this power supply mounts on and it's basically just a strip of aluminum you pop it on in there and you can mount everything up real nice to a wall it's fantastic um, so, I hope, I hope that maybe, maybe you learned something. Uh, I don't know what you learned or what I was supposed to be teaching, but uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, yeah, so give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, tell me what, you know, sucked. If the whole video sucked, glorious. Um, but yeah, these, uh, these little, these little boards, the ability to control this sane smart relay, uh, basically I, I repurposed a piece of garbage, right? Like I was never going to use it without one of these boards. It just wasn't going to happen. Um, and in fact, I think one of the gates on here, the little the little transistor MOSFET type, whatever the heck they are, uh, I think the, what do they call them? They're gates. They control how the relays work. Shift registers. That's what I'm looking for. One of the shift registers is actually mashed on it and pushed over where I had apparently thrown the board somewhere and it got mushed. Uh, so I'm surprised it actually still works, but, um, anyway, 30 minutes in, looks like I'm at 33 minutes. If you learned anything from this video, even if you skipped around, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell me how much I suck. Thank you very much.